and a warm welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to go over progress on the Fokker D8 again, so let's dig right in. Alright, so the first thing I gotta tell you guys is this plane is really close to flying. Like really, really, like could fly as is, but I won't because I believe in finish things, finishing things. So uh, let's go over what I've done uh, and what's left to do. First thing I'm gonna tell you is this thing is big. Um, it just completely <laughs> fills my whole shop. Um, so there you go. Um, the wing is mounted quite nicely. Uh, I do have some screws off of it for now, but uh, I wanted to point out that my plates, I had to fill in these pockets a little bit with wood um, just to, to get these wires to fit flush. And then I had to create these brass straps. Uh, each one of these is cut from some brass sheeting that I had on hand. And then I, uh, I, I ground off the, the, the sharp bits and after the cutting and, and hammering it flat again from the cutting. And then I drilled them out um, and then obviously put the, uh, put the screws in, which is pretty straightforward stuff. So the screws are, again, this, the screws are pre-drilled and then I put the screw in and then um, once the screw has been put in and pulled out so the screw is set in the wood, I put some thin CA down the hole, let it all harden, and then clean the screw out again. So that's all set. Now, if that seems tedious, you'll love the next part. <laughs> so the dummy, the dummy engine. So this is actually the third. Um, where's the other one? Oh yeah, it's, it's over down there. Yeah. So let me show you why. I had to reprint this. So I spent a lot of time printing this. I think it turned out pretty great. But it's huge. Too big. Too big. So uh, had to be had to be reprinted, but uh, it turned out okay. I was able to get it done and um, yeah, so just printed some standard mounts, just a, basically an L bracket. Uh, just drew that up, literally took less than a minute to draw that infusion, and then printed this out. And so this screws into the, the motor mount box, and then this glues onto this. And so this is solid, it's not going anywhere. There's plenty of room for cooling, which is why part of the reason why I leave these cylinders off I don't need them. It's going to be hidden behind the cowl and then just made a nice big gaping hole for the motor. Now I wanted to leave the motor set back a little bit because there is going to be uh, the front plate of the cowl that's got to go here so I didn't want to worry about clearances there. So that's set. Um, let's see obviously everything is fiberglassed. Now I'm, again I'm, I'm using the same technique that I always use for my fiberglass work even on wood I use the same fiberglass technique where lay down some uh, sanding sealer or water-based polyurethane uh, they're the same thing and then after that I apply the glass cloth and after that I put more sanding sealer on I dry that with a hair dryer and then after that I add another coat <laughs> to help to help uh, make sure that the weave or the fabric is has all been wet and it's all going to stick to the surface and after that it's just a matter of letting it cure properly overnight come back and hit it with some sandpaper and we're good to go so again not a huge deal but it was a lot of tedious pro <coughs> progress um kind of messy um do i have no, it's drying upstairs because <laughs> I used it last night on our struts. So the struts, obviously this one was fiberglass previously so that I could put the side cheeks on. The side cheeks are all nicely glassed now. But uh, these struts have their fairings now. And this fairing is actually 
this uh, photo paper that I put down to protect the plans because uh, plans that I had under there were getting a little beat up. But uh, yeah, so what I did was I cut a piece of paper and folded it in half to create this fairing so that it was hollow for the servo wire. So that's how I make that servo wire go from the fuselage up there and then it plugs in right like that. Easy peasy. So uh, from there, let's see. Yeah, I got the uh, I got the tail all assembled. Obviously, you can see how I've got the control surfaces all linked up, and the vertical stabilizer is put on. That's glass as well. That was the last thing on the empennage to be put to together. Uh, I've got hinge, a long single hinge wire for the rudder. Uh, and I've got individual cotter pins for the elevator. Those still need to be set, uh, so the ends of the of the cotter pins need to be pulled out. Um, that's one of the things that's like a safety check to make sure that I'm paying attention and not going too fast. Um, hopefully I don't forget about that and something goes awry. Anyway, moving along. I mean, obviously there's other things that I've had to do to assemble this, like creating more of these brass straps for the landing gear. Um, you know, the, the, the battery hatch was already done, so that's good to go. Um, so, oh, I had to cut a hole in my firewall and had to create a battery connector. So the battery connector, it's, um, the battery connector is two XT90 connectors and there's a loop, there's a loop of wire. So I have my Curtis, my Great Plains giant scale Curtis P6 Hawk. The batteries for that airplane are, well, it flies off of a six cell configuration, but I use two three cell packs because the three cell packs are skinnier and I can slip them under the backside of the cowl, just under the motor to where they sit. So I just use that on all my planes. <laughs> it's a 6S battery, but uh, because of that configuration, I fly that airplane literally all the time. Um, that That's what I just, I use. So for this airplane, I just put the two XT90 connector on the ESC, just to simplify. I don't have to worry about extensions or juggling stuff. It just, it made my life a little bit easier and I can use a separate plug. Like I do have a 6S, six or seven thousand pack that I can put in here but I can use a separate looped plug in one side so that that'll work and anyway it's complicated but that's how I'm thinking uh, if you want to do the same thing you can um, but other than that everything's pretty much I mean like the list is short but the work is tremendous um, it's just looking such the part at this point still need to put in my guns um, but that's to come that'll probably come after the maiden just because it's going to be real real fun trying to cut holes that are you know not square in the top of that uh, turtle deck but uh anyway she's just, she's just so big and you know it i like how it keeps the foam real you know like this is still a foamy and with foamies you come, you know, you, you expect it to be light, but okay. So let's talk weight. <laughs> this airplane, as it sits on the table with batteries in it to fly weighs 10 and a half pounds. Now you think, oh, that's really heavy for a foamy. Mind you that the motor and ESC combination that I have on here flies a 14 pound air biplane. Okay, so more surface area, heavier. Okay, let's also put into perspective that this quarter scale airplane in Balsa, according to Balsa USA, their kit, uh, they estimate 12 to 14 pounds all up weight flying. So even after I add paint and the really light guns and a cowl, we're really only, I, I can't imagine that weighing more than a pound. So I think I'm still gonna come in under the weight, the recommended all up weight. 
of a traditional balsa airplane, which is crazy to me. Now, on top of that, what's even crazier to me is, number one, this is a World War I airplane, okay? You want to talk about short nose moment? Okay, so the center of gravity is here, okay? And there is the front of the airplane, okay? It's not that far. Now, <laughs> what's even weird? Okay, so let's go over here. We're gonna go into the shop. So here's a Corsair, just for reference. Here's the front and the center of gravity is somewhere around there, okay? So that's a bigger distance on that, see that's roughly a one seventh scale model. And this is one quarter, one quarter scale model. <laughs> so just to let you know, I'm nose heavy. I'm nose heavy on this airplane with the smaller packs, which is, it, it blows my brain uh, that, that I'm, I'm nose heavy right now, which is also great news because that means I can also potentially put in a pilot, uh, which I have printed, which I'm considering reprinting because it's not the greatest print in the world, can be improved upon and it's minimal effort involved. It's just, you know, time and, time and money, essentially, money for the filament. So um, yeah, that, that excites me. That, that really excites me that this is, I, like, I don't have to add any more weight than I have to on this airplane because it's already nose heavy. And that's just totally fine with me means that I made the right call for the elevator servo, um, means I made the right call with how I did my spar setup. Now, the last thing that I can do, if I do need tail weight, um, there are some struts on the full scale airplane that would go like from here down to here. And that I can do pretty easily with just, some music wire and uh, electrical ring terminals and some soldering, not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, that'd be an easy way to add just a touch of tail weight way far back. So we're not gonna increase the overall weight to the airplane, but get the CG a little bit more refined. So more on that after I possibly fly it, I wanna see how things go once I get to a flying mode. So, last thing, what's the last thing I need to fly this? Well, I need a cowl. Okay, so uh, number one, this has to be unfloppified, but uh, I need a cowl to go over this front area. Um, the whole reason that I wanna do a cowl is because of the aerodynamics. Okay, there's, there's pressure build up right there. Okay, and I don't want erratic airflow from this going over there and screwing with how this is going to feel on a maiden flight okay so that's why that's going to get finished it's not going to get painted i'm not going to go crazy with other details before it, it maidens i just need to have that basic thing and again the whole reason i wanted the dummy radial was because of this, this is a wing, this is an airfoil, okay? If I'm gonna have pressure moments here, I need all of this turbulent air to be factored here. There's no sense in flying the airplane if you're gonna fly it once, and then once it's done, it's gonna fly totally different. So um, how do you know it's worth finishing, or you know, you built something a little bit wrong and you need to improve upon it and cut into it. You know, these kinds of things, that's my thought process. I'm pretty sure that's it, guys. Uh, you know, just little bits of time here and there. <laughs> nothing crazy, it, no, nothing too complicated. I hope you guys are having a great holiday season and that you're making plans to spend time with family and friends. Um, if you get a chance, uh, I, I think it would be worth your while to take time and invest in someone else this, this holiday season. So until next time, guys, continue working on and enjoying your foamy flying works of art.